Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Timo Saksola from Tampere University. And my colleague is Professor Jari Mäkinen and our presentation in this first virtual European Conference on Fracture is numerical modeling of cracking in the gravity dam under static and seismic loadings with multiple pre and deputy discontinued finite and methods. First, we would like to give some background and motivation for the study. The failure analysis of dams is an important task in geotechnical engineering, especially in seismic reactive areas. And for concrete, this task involves modeling crack propagation under, for example, earthquake induced ground motion. Well, most of the concrete and failure analysis are usually performed by damage plasticity models using finite element methods. And these methods, you, you model the crack in a smeared sense as localized deformation. However, this study presents or applies embedded discontinuity finite element method for analyzing a concrete dam under earthquake ground motion. And we use as a, our numerical example to coin the dam data given in the internet. So this dam during the 67 earthquake undergone some considerable damage and cracking. We tried to predict this in the monolithic of the dam under the accelerator cramps recorded at that time and also in overflow situation. First, we present the theory of the simulation model. So we use the embedded discontinuity finite element method for modeling concrete fracture. And we have the multiple intersecting discontinuity version where three discontinuities are embedded before the analysis in each finite element in the mesh. For triangular element, this is here, the discontinuities are embedded parallel to the element edges. And then for such case, we can write the displacement and strain fields as. So the displacement field consists of the regular term and then the enhanced term. Where there's heaviside function defined at each crack and then special ramp function t, which I explained shortly. Then the displacement opening vector alpha. Taking gradient, we get the strain where there's the regular term first and then the enhanced terms. Delta is here, the Dirac delta function coming from the gradient of the heaviside function. The crack normals are now when the, uh, the we have a three node triangle and uh, cracks are parallel to element that is the normals are simply gradients, norm normalized gradients of the displacement uh, interpolation function. And then we have ramp functions which are chosen as the, the corresponding nodal functions. So the purpose of function phi here is that it, it restricts the uh, effect of displacement sum within the corresponding finite element. And thus it facilitates the treatment of the essence of boundary conditions. It should also be mentioned that the gradient of the displacement sum is extremely zero. So this is the most, uh, this is the constant mode one and two approach. Because the strain for a linear triangle is constant. It is logical to assume that also the displacement term is constant, element-wise. We have a 1D illustration of the embedded discontinuity method. So this is a two-node bar element fixed at the other end and pulled at the other. We have the nodal displacement functions here, and then the heavy side function defined at the middle where the crack is. And then the function n, which is the difference of the heavy side, and p, which in this case is the nodal interpolation function of node 2. Then we have the displacement, uh, the regular part, uh, the displacement growth from 0 to maximum value at right end. Then we have the term uh, from with the function n, which uh, multiplied by the displacement opening value. And summing up these, we get the final. Uh, representation of the displacement which goes from zero to the middle to where it has to jump alpha d and then it goes to the maximum value. Then we need to solve for the displacement jump and the traction vector and the other uh, internal variables. 
And for this end, we have a plasticity inspired model. Now, the model consists of the following components. There is first the loading function, which, uh, which, with, which, with which we decide when the crack opens. So it has, it depends on the traction and then the internal variables and its rate. So this is the rate dependent model. It has the rate of the internal variable. And uh, the loading function consists of the tension term, mode one term here, and then the shear term, mode two term, with the shear retention factor beta. And then it has the uh, tensile strength and the hardening of the function which is defined linearly with respect to the internal variable and viscosity. This is the rate dependent term defined by viscosity modulus and the softening term with the softening modulus H for each crack. So, um, ex exponential softening is defined here, calibrated with the mode 1 fraction energy. Then this is the evolution equation for the traction and the evolution equations for the crack opening vector and the internal variable. These are the uh, uh, defined and are goes through the computation of plasticity. So with these, we fulfill the uh, dissipation equation and then the consistency condition, this so-called consistency formulation. And uh, so the evolution of the traction vectors is based on Cauchy expression of traction and as an inner product between the stress tensor and the crack norm. So this relation defines the final stress strain relationship like this. So here you have the elasticity tensor, regular finite element strain, and then the, the enhanced terms. So the material behavior is locally isotropic and linearly elastic until the tensile strain is reached, after, after which so exponential softening uh, expressed in terms of the crack opening be uh, begins. Then we go to the solution of the equation of motion, the global equations of motion, and we have a ground motion boundary condition. The global equations of motion with the ground motion boundary condition are solved with explicit time integrator here. We have the equation of motion with no linear internal force term. And then on the right hand side, on the, on the force side of the equation, we have possible external force vector, and this term which comes from the ground motion. With this, we solve the uh, acceleration, and then we proceed in time further with these equations for the displacement and velocity. So L here is the influence matrix for the ground motion acceleration, and this one, U double dot GT, and it ex are the external force vector containing contributions for the self-weight of the dam and the hydrostatic forces due to the reservoir. So the ground motion, this is actually the ground motion acceleration, this is G. And Rayleigh damping, mass proportion of Rayleigh damping appears here. You see this uh, some more, some uh, factor times the mass matrix, which is, is the outside the proportionality factor. So mass proportional damping is used because diffuse proportional damping drastically decreases the critical time critical time step uh, of the explicit time integration schemes. And the, the hydrodynamic forces are accounted for with the additive mass technique by Mr. Gard. Now we go to the numerical examples. So the first case is coin a dam under quasi-static loading. So coin a dam under self-weight and the full reservoir situation and an overflow situation is simulated first. Here are the material parameters, the model parameters for the model, and the, the overflow pressure is increased linearly during the simulation until cracks get off. So here you see the, the dimensions, the 2D, 2D modeling. And here you see the di dimensions of the dam and the overflow pressure here. And this is the fi final element mesh for this analysis. So when we solve this, we get the first crack appearing at the upstream corner of the base here, where the bending tensile stress is at, at, is at its maximum. And the second crack appears higher in the upstream phase than this one, and it propagates into the monolith with curved trajectory. So you can see here two cases with two values of the of the pressure, and uh, the crack is shown here as the magnitude of the displacement opening in millimeters. 
So this is compared to the Milan uh, Jerasek and uh, Thomas Zimmerman case. They also model this 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 uh, problem with the embedded crack model. It's a combination of smear crack. So this is their crack trajectory. The second problem is corner dam under static and dynamic loading. So here we have again the uh, dimensions and then the accelerations are also presented, the ground accelerations, the mesh, and the accelerograms recorded during the Coiner Dam acceleration, uh, the Coiner Dam earthquake in 67. And we also have a shelf weight, of course, and the hydrostatic reservoir load. Material parameters and model parameters are here, and uh, the really damping factor is calculated in accordance with, in accordance with Abacus example guide. So it is assumed as a 3% fraction of the critical damping. The first mode, the vibration of the damping gives final value for the alpha as 1.12 with this natural frequency. Uh, so here you can see the simulation results. So this is the uh, crack propagation in, again in terms of the crack opening uh, magnitude at different time stations during the analysis. At uh, figure A, you can see that again the, the monolith first fails here at the bottom, at the base, the up, upstream base here due to the tensile stresses. And secondary crack appears again, but now com in contrast to the overflow situation, the static versus static one, now due to the ground motion acceleration, the secondary crack appears in the downstream side. At this, uh, geom at this corner where the geometry changes, so there the new crack initializes. And you can see its propagation here. And uh, in figure D, the horizontal crest displacement at the top is recorded for linear elastic case as red curve. Then there is linear elastic with the hydro this hydrodynamic force. The blue, uh, the black curve, and then there is the the curve with the uh, plasticity, well, the crack opening. I mean, the crack model enabled is the blue curve, and uh, this simulation is compared to the uh, Abacus example problems guide result for the same problem, and you can see here the damage going to the Abacus concrete damage model. So the, the cracks are at the similar locations as with our prediction. So the present model can capture also this uh, correct failure modes of the dam under ground motion excitation. And with these examples we come to the concluding remarks. So these continuities are pre-embedded parallel to the edges of each triangle element in the mesh, and this approach is thus similar to the cohesive interface element approaches. However, in contrast to those cohesive zone elements, here the extra variables, which are the crack opening vectors, are local in nature so that they can either be eliminated by static condensation or treated similarly as the plastic strain tensor. In plasticity models. Thereby, the present approach is computationally cheaper than cohesive zone interface element methods. And the numerical examples we simulated the coiner dam under quasi static loading due to an overflow and also under dynamic loading under the 1957 earthquake. And these simulations demonstrated that the present approach can predict the salient features of gravity then on the both the quasi-static and static excitation. Specifically, the cracking behavior predicted here is generally similar to the one predicted with plasticity damage models of previous study. Therefore, it can be concluded that the present approach could be a tool in earthquake engineering, especially after its future extensive 3D. Thank you for your attention.